Our department does geophysics across the spectrum. We do field, analytical, computational, and theoretical geophysics. We do that for a variety of uh, national security customers. Part of it is the aspect of trying to address global security, sustainable energy needs, address national issues. But the other part of it is having the capability to innovate and to work on new things that no one else is working on. Well, the national security problems that we're faced with often come down to boots on the ground. It's a person with a sensor trying to understand something about what happened in a place they can't see. Whether it's a nuclear detonation that uh, shouldn't have occurred, whether it's people trying to cross a border when they shouldn't be, or whether it's um, underground facilities um, where we need to um, understand what's happening. The seismic hammer is a prototype seismic source. It's a modified pile driver, which is, has a 13,000 kilogram mass drop. So it's the largest in the, in the world of its type. And uh, we are the first users of it. I lead fundamental research in using open source seismic network data to try to lower the global detection thresholds of nuclear events. We can affect and impact global security by being able to rapidly determine that these events have occurred faster than we've ever done before. As a country, we are very interested in what other countries are doing and whether they have a nuclear capability and how advanced that capability is if they do have it. And we want to be able to make sure that they are holding up with their treaty obligations. So the geophysics department works on problems ranging from those applicable to the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty to those applicable for oil and gas extraction. Energy security is really important to this country. And so we know today that tight shale gas extraction is at about a 20% operation, meaning that they're leaving about 80% of the reservoir in the ground. We need to help them increase the amount of gas extraction that they're getting so that our, our gas prices are low and that we have a sustainable uh, fossil fuel resource. All of these variations that you see in the rock actually can have a, a very profound effect on the large-scale measurements that we make. And the challenge then is whether to attribute it to something that we're interested in knowing something about or whether those anomalies are because of this geologic complexity. So we spend a lot of time and effort trying to get as realistic a model as we can to understand our data as best we can. We have the facility for acceptance in calibration and testing the fact site. It's a 500 acre piece of land where we can calibrate instruments for non-proliferation. Um, so this is the cutting edge research on ensuring that the source information that we're recording is as accurate as possible. We're measuring what's beneath the ground and what's above the ground. Another thing that our group is doing increasingly is trying to take old data and try to find new meaning in those data sets using modern techniques. We also have a new infrasound chamber. This particular chamber allows us to pressurize the, the system to simulate lower elevation conditions like sea level, maybe even pull a partial vacuum to simulate higher altitudes. It's best if we can simulate the environments in which these sensors are installed. What we come out with is some kind of product or some kind of advance that we can then push back into the scientific community and say, okay, we've solved this problem, take it and, and run with it.